Welcome back, my Wall 2 family. It's Abraham from South Coast Welding Academy, and tonight I'm with one of my past students, Xavier. And today we're going to be doing some buddy welding. What's going on, guys? My name is Xavier Sierra, former student out of South Coast Welding Academy. I'm a tube welder out of Boilermakers Local 132. And I'm here today with Abraham. We're going to be taking on this tube panel using the buddy system. So what um, is this buddy system? Uh, I'm going to be feeding the rod to you, right, while you handle the tick torch on right, the roof pass. Right. Um, why would you use that system? Why, how come the welder just doesn't go to the other side and then switch back and forth whenever it's, welding a tube It takes too much time to get to one side and the other. It's too much of a bind to get out. And it's easier, too, for the welder. So uh, what's the difference between pipe welding and tube welding? Like, uh, the, did they ask for different uh, penetration on, on, on the roof or? It usually depends on, the, on what side you're working on. Um, Union side, they usually ask for no push through. No they push want through. a flush route. Right. The reason because um, in these water lines, too much push through is going to cause a turbulence or corrosion. Too much corro erosion and corrosion in the pipe, and it's going to throw up too much vibration. It's going to throw off the tubes. Okay, cool. That's very nice to know. Well, I'm excited to tackle this, so let's get it, man. Let's get it. All right, guys. So we're right here at a, a two uh, panel simulation right here. We got a pipe um, in place right here. So in the real job site, how would this be prepped up? Um, first thing we would do is uh, we would go into the boiler, right. locate where the blowout's at, where we're having the leak. Then we would make a spread, um, cut the tube out. Um, so the tube would be placed right here, and then you would, uh, you would find the leak, and you would cut that section right, out. Right, we would cut the section out. Once it's cut out, we get these uh, motors. They're called mill hogs. Right like a big drill we just latch it on move the two, top tube to the side latch it on and then start mill hogging it making the bevel gives you a nice bevel right then we go ahead prep on the inside prep the outside so on, on these tubes uh, what's the average space in between the tubes that you have the spacing on, on in the field sometimes you're going to get into some pretty tough spots like these but right. most of the times the ones i've worked at we get um a little bit more space or a little bit more play we get shins and we just put them on the on the side and just hammer them in there Right. So we get enough space to get into the tube and get that tie-in on the sides. Okay, so you're able to bend this a little bit. Right, out. just, yeah, just a little bit. I mean, sometimes they got a lot of play, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Depends on where you're at. Okay. Most of the times, you get a lot of play. These tubes are loose sometimes. Yeah, guys, so we're right here at this tube ball right here. We got our pipe in place. Um, the gap we're going to be using is going to be a loose one eight. Now, Xavier mentioned to me that out there in the field, uh, they sometimes do go smaller, like a loose 332, but for viewing purposes, we're using a loose 1.8. Um, initially, Xavier's going to be on the other side, I'm going to be on this side, and I'm going to be feeding the rod to him as he's doing the root pass, okay? Now, what I'm going to be lo looking forward to is I want to keep, I want to make sure that the tip of my rod stays at the end of his puddle, all right? That's, what I, that's all I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to be feeding him. And he's going to be communicating to me where he wants my rod, if he wants it a little bit higher or a little bit lower, closer to the top toe of the bevel or the bottom toe of the, t of the bevel. And uh, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. That's right, guys. Um, my partner's going to be on the other side of the wall. I'm going to be running the TIG rig, making sure I get that root in, burn them walls. Um, I'm going to be letting him know, communicating with him, how much wire I need, where do I need it, top, top bevel, bottom bevel, come back, push forward. All right, guys, we got our tube tacked up, feathered down. Um, in the boilers, we usually uh, stuff the tubes with rice paper both ends so we don't get that draft, that wind draft messing up with our root once we're about to close up. Um, so right now we're going to go ahead and start. I'm going to burn off my tack. My partner's going to be waiting for me with the um, TIG wire on the other side. All right. right now, I'm just burning my tack. All right, Abraham. Good, good. How's that? Come in, come in, come in. Come back. Come back, come back. All right. That's good right there. Yeah. Looking good. We're running at 95 amps. Our gap is set up at a, a, a loose 1 8 gap since we're running 1 8 wire. All right, pop off, pop off. All right, guys, so Xavier just finished the route on the other side. 
Uh, he was controlling the torch. I was feeding him the rod through this side. The system's called a buddy system, buddy welding. So since now the other side is welded up, the other roots, half of the pipe is welded up, and now I have to finish this side uh, by myself, okay? I'm gonna start with my left hand. Over here, I'm gonna start, I'm try to start way at the corner. This is the hardest part of the root, just because it's very hard to get uh, to the corner edge of the uh, of where the restart sat, because you know, this tube right here is in the way. But uh, to achieve that, uh, you might want to have a, a significant amount of uh, tungsten stick out so you can reach it. Um, and uh, you're going to want to put your, uh, your filler metal through the gap. And you're going to have to use your, le uh, your left hand right here. Okay. And then I'm going to weld all the way to the middle, maybe past the middle, pop out right here, switch hands, and then, you know, start, on, start this side, start way over here where I can, the farthest I can. Uh, start my root, you know, make a good tie-in, and then tie-in in the middle, okay? Like I guess I'm getting ready to strike up here um, on this tie-in. This is the hardest side for me just because I'm using my non-dominant hand, my left hand. I'm going to heat up the, uh, I'm going to heat up the tie-in, I heat it up, attach my puddle, and I'm taking off. All right, so I just finished welding this left side of the tube. Uh, this, that was this, the hardest difficult side for me because that's my non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, uh, but I stopped right in the middle. All right, that's because my tying is going to be right in the middle. I'm going to come over here with my right hand and finish it. But check this out. Uh, this, is a this is a tool they use out there in the, in the boiler systems. Um, uh, this is a die grinder, 90. And I'm just going to use this to feather my, uh, my tying right here. All right, guys. So I'm striking on the right side of my of the pipe right here, heating up the, the tie-in, and then I'm going to uh, attach my rod to it. So this is pretty much how you would run a 2G root with TIG. You know, nothing really changes. It's the same thing, but with this, you can keep you, you're able to keep the rod more to the uh, outside of the bevel, just because you know they they don't ask for much penetration when it comes to boulder boulder tube welding. Just able to keep that rod right on the outside. All right, guys, my partner just got done with this side of the root, closed it up. Now it's my turn to do my hot pass on my back, on my back side. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my wire like this on top and I'm gonna let it drip down in there and build something up that I can catch on enough to fill up the, the tube on my side. And then from there, I'm gonna go and start filling it up. I keep my tungsten at a good length, stick out, so I can get as much as uh, as much as his side that I as I can, so he could uh, catch it good on his end. All right, guys. So check this out. Look how he's able. Look how look at the technique he's using to get right on the side of the pipe. This is like, going to be the hardest part of the well, just because he got the you know, he got the other pipe in the way. So how he's able to uh, achieve and put weld on the side is he uh, locates his rod on the top toe of the, of the, uh, of the bevel. You want to build up as much as you can in that root, in that fill. You want to fill it up in one pass. Running at about 120, 125 amps. You got one at wire. All right, guys, we're on our left side now. I'm building up metal. So my partner can catch it on his side. I want to make it as easy as possible for him to catch it on his side. Once I get to the center of the tube, where I let, last tied off at, I like to go over it. So I can build up more metal right there. So my cap come out nicer. Burn off everything that's in there. You know? Pop off. All right, guys, Xavier just finished his hot pass on the other side. I'm getting ready to do mine. Before I do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, feather down the tie-ins or the starts uh, here on this uh, tube. 
I have one on the left and one on the right. Uh, you want to do this so that you ensure that you don't leave any trash uh, on those starts right there. And uh, I found out doing this that doing a backward back and forth motion with this tends to give you less undercut. Especially with these uh, two inch, they're uh, very prone to undercut just because uh, they're really small and thin. Alright guys, so remember guys, always feather your stop. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is to my right side. What I'm doing, I'm dropping uh, some weld at the bottom, at the top of the toe of the weld, and I'm just bringing it down. Okay? All I'm doing. This is the technique you use so that you're able to, you know. I'm gonna do the back and forth motion. All right, guys, we're getting ready to cap off this tube. We're gonna start on the bottom bead cap. Um, we're running at 120 amps. Let's get it. It'll be the same process. Build up my metal, make a little nice cap. Alright guys, so Xavier just finished the bottom beat of his cap on the other side. I'm getting ready to start my side over here. Uh, before I start, remember guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, feather down the tie-ins, okay? On the sides of the tube. The gap we're going to be using is going to be a loose one eight. Now, Xavier mentioned to me that out there in the field, uh, they sometimes do go smaller, like a loose 332, but for viewing purposes, we're using a loose 180. All right, guys, so I'm getting ready to do my left side. I'm gonna use my left hand, left, least dominant hand. Uh, so uh, good luck to myself. Very good practice, common practice that, that they do is uh, you want to make sure that you feather down uh, the starts. The technique I use was a little diagonal back and forth motion. What I will do, I will add rod to the puddle, go forward, go back up, add rod, go forward, go back up. Add rod, go forward, go back, add rod. All right, that's my technique. I use a little back and forth technique. All right, guys, so Xavier just finished capping the other side. It's my turn now. Uh, remember, guys, I'm gonna uh, feather down my uh, start. Go back, add rod. All right, that's my technique. I use a little back and forth technique. But I found that with that technique, I get less undercut than if I was to go up and down. 
That meaning you cannot go up and down. It's just my preference right there. All right, guys. So uh, I just finished on my right side. I want to get ahead and um, uh, tear down my uh, my end. Uh, got rid of that fish. I'm getting ready to do uh, start off on my left side. Uh, this is the hardest side for me since it's my non-dominant hand. Uh, so good luck to me again. Alright guys, so there you have it, a tutorial on this uh, two welding uh, simulation right here. I'd like to give thanks to my boy right here, Xavier, for coming out and showing us. Again, he's a past student from South Coast One Academy and he's now working for a union. And this is exactly what he does, okay? Uh, we wanted to bring a real life scenario to y'all. Again, if uh, this is a lot harder than it looks like. I try make, to make my cap look good, but uh, that's as best as I could right now. It's not like, you know, doing a rollout weld, making it look pretty, but yeah. Um, Again, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time.